So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a bunch for being here. I very much appreciate it. Always appreciate when people come and, and hopefully um, I can help you with a few things here today and always feel free to ask questions as well of me. Um, <clears throat> today the subject is indicators, which um, I heard Rick um, talking that he's surprised at how many indicators he uses. And although I have indicators on some charts, I don't use them much. I I, um, I went through a process, and, and I'm sure many of you have heard this story before, but I went through a process in my career when I overused indicators a lot. And then I went to a process of eliminating those indicators. And <clears throat> that's my favorite chart right there. That's a chart where I make most of my trade decisions from. And having said that, um, I believe um, with everything that's in me that the most important indicator you have is price. And oftentimes we are doing everything we can with indicators to ignore price. We're trying to put things on there that will tell us when it's time to trade, tell us when it's time to sell, um, tell us, you know, um, you know, how that we should manage our trades. And the fact of the matter is, what we really need to know is usually encompassed in the price action of the chart. Now, indicators can be very handy, and I heard Rick say about smoothing out the craziness. You know, when we look at the diamonds chart, there is one heck of a lot of craziness in there. That is for sure and for certain. But I also think that's important because it's that wildness, the whipsawing, the, the wildness of price action that tells us there's danger or the market to reduce our activity to me to be even more picky and deliberate about trades that we can that we get into because most people when they look at a candlestick chart all they see is bullish engulfing bearish engulfing shooting star patterns you know things like that what the chart is really showing us on any potential chart it's showing us where the bulls are, where the buyers are, sellers are. Okay. And if we look at a chart that way with, with that price action, it can be our most important indicator in a trade. Price action also tells us how much risk we have to take on a trade. Price action tells us when price is becoming concise and deliberate when it's becoming wild and very unstable. And so I will always say that the most important thing that you can do in trading is study price. And it gives you some advantages when you do that because of this wild jerky volatility in here. Um, I put on a bull put, or excuse me, a bear call credit spread on the diamonds, and today closed that for a 23% profit. Because I can see that wild craziness in the market. It might, might have been a relatively high risk trade. I'll show it to you here. This was my cutoff point. If I closed above that line, I was going to close the trade. My short strike was all the way up there. So I was removed from price. I, because of this wild price action, I got away from price and was able to take a profit on this wild price action you know, market 
because I do study the price action chart. It is by far the most important thing. Now price in, it, in and of itself shows us trend. It shows us support and resistance. It gives us clues to our trading. If you watched our, my morning market prep video today, I went through, I always go through, what does this look like if the bulls have inspiration or find a way to push up? Where do we go if the bears find inspiration? And I said this morning, you can go back and review to this morning's morning prep video. If the bears were to come in and find inspiration, I said the first level of test of support was right there. And if that doesn't hold, I said, look at that. And if that doesn't hold, I said, we're going to come down to here and possibly test the trend. Now, that, that's not me trying to predict anything. Because at the same time, I said, if the bulls, if the bulls find inspiration, well, we need to start pushing up through these levels here, breaking through these resistance levels back up. So I always look at where the buyers are or the sellers are. Right way options people heard me say this yesterday that this big wick left behind up here at the end of the day that big wick left behind up here gives me the impression or the possibility of a double top or even a lower high to be coming in diamonds so i want um if there if there was something i could really help a lot of people with <clears throat> It would be that willingness to look at the price action of the chart, regardless whether you've got lines on it or anything else. I want you to start looking at charts and see where are the buyers, where are the sellers? What is the trend? Because if you can do that, you can place better trades. The last trade I called here on CRM, and again, you can go back in the morning prep videos and see this, was right here. There's, we could see the buyers, we could see the trend, and I suggested a fill of the gap was likely. That's no big magic there. That's just looking at the price action of the chart. And the important thing I want everyone to see here is it didn't require me to have any indicators to see that. In fact, I would tell you, if I put some of my old charts up here, and I won't even go with my most complicated, um, I'll go with some of the more, um, whoops. on watch list the simpler charts now with that much on the chart how many of you would have seen that pattern by the way guys um, this was something that was taught to me the very first trading class I ever took was to use a white background chart in black and white candles. And I fought that for years. As you can see, this was one of my charts. I fought it for years. When you look at this chart, guys, and all of this junk in here, how many of you see that price pattern clearly? Or as clearly as you can when you see it that way. Okay. Now I know there's a lot of non-believers in here about the white background chart and black and white candles, but I would challenge you to go out on the internet and do a search. 
And I promise you what you'll find is that the human eye is capable of seeing black and white. Recognize patterns in black and white. Many, many times more than they can see it here. So the chart and the price action are the first indicator, the best indicator that you can use when it comes to studying a chart, studying price action. It tells you where there's low risk. So for example, potential low risk entry in here, place a price alert. In fact, if you look at my drawings, right there was the price alert. That pink line. Placed another one here today. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for those areas where I can clearly see where buyers are and where sellers are so that I can get good quality entries into a trade. And I add to that by drawing up the chart. Okay, the drawing up the chart helps me draw attention to resistance, trend, all those different things in the chart. So I can mark it out and help it, help myself see it easier. Okay. Now, when I started teaching the 3 8 trap in the chart, um, I, I knew that I couldn't just take a chart like this and teach people what I've learned by studying price action because I spent so many hours, tens of thousands of hours, just studying price. But the thing is when you use basic moving averages, the basic moving averages can help you see the same thing. Just don't clutter the chart. Don't overdo it on the chart. You know, um, I spent some time this morning answering some questions in RWO, and one of the things that I like to say all the time is to figure out who you are as a trader. And I don't care if you use daily charts, if you use weekly charts, 195-minute charts, um, intraday, wh whatever it is that you use. But the most important thing is to pick something and stick with it. I get questions all the time because I know Rick uses um, uh, his three differently than I use the, the trap. But he uses his three set not at the last but at the high. Now I'm going to move this to the high and I'm going to ask you guys how many of you this trade would have made any difference if that was the three high or the three last. That made any difference at all. Okay, I don't think that makes any difference. And you know, the thing is guys, I don't care if it is a 7 and a 12 or whatever it is that you, you choose to use the best thing you can do is get something on there and work with it try not to overdo it keep your your trading as simple as you can as clean as you can because remember no matter what the indicator tells you Indicators are always lagging, and price is what pays us, not indicators. Okay, now I don't have a problem with indicators or anything like that. I don't have a problem that anything is bad about them, or, um, except that fact that we overdo it. We try to make indicators take over the responsibility of what's a good trade and what's not a good trade. And honestly, 
It's not that in, the indicator's job to do that. It's the job of price to tell us whether a trade is acceptable for us or not. If it's following a pattern that we know that repeats itself. So think about those things carefully and maybe really consider, am I overdoing it with indicators? Could I simplify my trading? Could I get back to a more structured set of rules on how I deal with price action because I think that could help a lot of people in their trading dramatically and and it's easy to see you know these issues if you've been listening to me on the QQQ um, one of the things um, I said here in the NASDAQ because I was looking at this chart back over here I said if we fail through here guys we're going to look for a quick fill of this gap. And if that doesn't hold, we're going to come down here. It's not because I'm a genius. It's not because there's anything special about me. It's because I'm actually seeing the chart. I'm not trying to predict it. I'm seeing the chart and I just want to move with the market. charts and <clears throat> that's the only difference is my willingness to look at a chart for what it is and not for what I, I want it to be and be able to see where the sellers are and where the buyers are because of price action that I get my biggest advantage in my trade. So now, that being said, there are questions that come up with people all the time. How many in here have trouble setting stop losses? One of the, it's one of the biggest questions I get. I don't know where to put my stop on a trade. I spent um, a, a full year testing the implied volatility, I mean the uh, volatility stop indicator here on TC2000. Now, they don't have this on any other platform I've seen. Okay, there are other indicators. And by the way, this is not a parabolic SAR. A lot of people say, well, that's just a parabolic SAR. No, it is not. It is the volatility stop indicator on TC2000. And it's very, very easy to set up. You just put the volatility stop indicator on your chart, and then I spent a year running tests on all different time frames, meaning all different time frames of charts, and all different kinds of settings to see which really worked the best for me in trading. And it, I ended up coming up with, you know, average true range period of 10 periods. So 10 periods means if it's a 10 days on a daily chart, 10 weeks on a weekly chart, okay? 10 five minute candles if you're trading a five minute chart. With an average true range multiplier, basically kind of a standard deviation of one and a half percent or 1.5, okay? Now that adjusted the volatility stop just far enough away that it tells you where your stop losses are. Okay, it tells you how to set those stop losses properly when you're in a trade. So if you're struggling, this is one indicator that I would really highly recommend to people that are struggling seeing support, resistance, and trend and where their stop loss should be, to showing you the risk of a potential trade okay now the real important thing on this is there's nothing magic about the volatility stop indicator okay because what it's really doing if you pay close attention to the chart it's showing us support resistance and trend okay that's what it's doing when we get these little platform patterns in here 
there's two two examples right here where we pulled back and it turned red because we broke the support we broke the support so it turned red so buying in here may have been a higher risk buy-in but we gapped right up and kept on going to the upside we reversed this back up and what you can see right here is when we popped through we turned green and showed us support right underneath that price action and that's where our stop loss needs to go underneath there right it can also be a warning system too markets are really volatile see how over here everyone was thinking bull 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 um, meta did such a great job everything is going to go up that red right there is telling us be careful here because we could run directly into this price resistance and fail okay so if you have trouble seeing where the buyers are and where the sellers are in a chart the volatility stop indicator can help you see that okay why do we move up we move up because there's more buyers than sellers we move down because there's more sellers than buyers if we can identify where the buyers are and the sellers are we can do a better job of finding good quality entries into trades we can avoid extraordinary risk or big risk you know when you think about this move here and you're you people are surprised by this volatility but when you look right here there's where the sellers are here's where the buyers are this is a high risk lots of risk in trading this right now whether you're long or short it's high risk and it's showing us that price range we can see where the sellers are we can see where the buyers are if we're willing to look so when you look at the chart look at it with that through that kind of lens because that can help us in virtually every time frame chart in every um, every pattern of the chart it will help us see that see where the potential risks are if we study the price action any questions on that before I keep moving here I hope there are because um, this is one of those things that I think is just extremely important and maybe you've all got it and you're not having any trouble with your trading here but if this is like new ground please ask the questions because um, these are things you need to know Okay, so when we take a look at a chart, guys, and, and I'm going to go to a, just a straight up naked chart, and we look at something like Coke, well, we don't need an indicator to tell us, okay, we don't need an indicator to tell us that this is moving up in a trend, right? What we need is a pattern that helps us see where the sellers are and where the buyers are so we move up from this pushback here and by the way this is a little mini downtrend right here because we failed to go up then we made a lower high followed by a lower low okay so that's a little mini downtrend all right we start to see buyers coming in when we break that little downtrend and we hold right here now that would have been a pretty tough trade honestly i can tell you 
high probability I wouldn't have caught it for an entry signal into the trade. And one of the reasons is that if I look at my volatility stop, that's just a crossover trade. Okay, I don't trade crossover trades. Crossover trades only win about 50% of the time. Couple examples right here. Chase that crossover, stopped out. Chase this crossover, get stopped out. Okay, so I need to see more evidence of rest, consolidation, a higher low being placed. And we can see right across here, in this move, this is where the buyers are. And this is where the sellers are. Now when I'm in an upside trend, I favor the buying side. I mean, always looking for that break to the upside because my technical pattern is bullish here. And I don't need an indicator to show me that. I need price action to show me that, but I don't need an indicator. And by the way, again, price is the best indicator. But price will always show me the best clues of a potential upside move if I'm willing to look for them. Okay. Even on a very ugly day like today, you guys, I had heard Rick mention he got into AT&T yesterday. <clears throat> Just because we have an ugly day doesn't mean everything is down. We get kind of depressed about it. We, oh my gosh, the world's coming to an end here for a little while. Nice, Katie. Great work job so in this chart if we pull this back well we can see where the trend is we can see in this price action right in here this is where the buyer showed up right up here is where the seller showed up breaking through this up here because we're in an upside trend I favor it to the long side So the more times you repeat that process and look over that chart that way will help you a ton in first removing a lot of contradiction. <clears throat> now, speaking of contradiction, one of the things that I see most often when I'm working with traders individually in coaching is they are creating their own contradictions. Price. Okay. So they look at something like this and they say, okay, I want to, I want to get into AT&T. So they buy AT&T here, but they put their stop loss right there. Is that respecting price action of the chart, guys? Where do we see the buyers actually showing themselves? The buyers are showing themselves here. So our stop loss, if we enter that trade, needs to be here. Because we could have a day pop up like this and what did we do? We came back and tested here. Now, the reason I call this a contradiction is because the contradiction is we see the bullishness of the chart, but then we refuse to respect the risk of the trade. Because I can't, I can't take that much risk in a trade. I'm not going to take my stop loss that big. Then what this chart is telling you on the daily chart that this isn't your trade. Go find a different trade. You shouldn't be trading it. The risk is too high for you. Okay. So we lose our heads in putting on a trade like this. And let me show you what the volatility stop shows. Because this 
right here turn green when we popped back up here on the volatility stop. But because it's just held here, now we're following through to the upside, it's still going to show us our stop loss should be actually down there. Show you that. The follow through of this candle, if it can close up here, and that's still an if, if it can close up here, has shifted today stop loss from being here to stop loss being underneath here, but not until this day closes. Until this day closes and we see some kind of push or follow through here that proves that is still going to the upside or a consolidation here that proves that we're still holding and that volatility stop will draw a line across there. that if we arbitrarily set our stop loss just wherever we want it to be, making a mistake. Because either we respect price action or we don't. And I can show you from a, a, a whole lot of experience from setting stop losses where I want it to be created a lot more losses in my trading When I set my stop losses where price action says it should be, my trading improved. Okay. How many of you um, be willing to admit you've had trades that your direction of the trade was actually correct, but you stopped yourself out by micromanaging intraday or micromanaging a chart with too tight a stop loss. Your technical analysis was correct, the direction was right, but you created the loss. Because we're not respecting price action of the chart. Anybody ever, in fact, those are the worst to me. Um, <clears throat> I hate it when the market like today whipsaws me out of a trade and it happens, you know, it's going to happen. But I hate it even worse when I created the loss. When I didn't respect the price action of the chart and the entire problem of the trade, I was right on direction. I created the loss. It's all me. Any, nobody's saying anything in here. Ever, I don't know if this is making any sense to you. Maybe people are just deep in thought. But are you guys getting anything out of this? Okay. I, I, I mean, I, I talk about this stuff a lot. And sometimes I feel like it's kind of preachy. Um, but... As, as long as you're seeing, if, it, if it's making sense and you're seeing what I'm trying to show here and, and it can make an impact to your trading, that's what I want. The other thing that I would, that I would like to um, impress upon you here as well is that how simple this is if we can get out of our own way. As technical traders, we tend to overcomplicate our trading so much that we even have trouble making a decision. We have a trouble, is this a bullish chart? Is this a bearish chart? Is this an entry? Is this a stop? Okay. Now this, this candle here. Uh, 
of intent. Yep, that's what it's signaling there. Signaling that. And the only reason it's signaling that and not this one is because we ultimately held above here all the way through. Even though we had that reaction trade down in here, that whips. All right? Good question. Um, So if you, um, if you want quicker trades, um, makes no difference to me. If you want something on the quicker side, um, RWO folks would have to verify this, but I was looking at the diamonds here earlier and, and I said, um, be careful here guys we have an evening star pattern on the 15 minute if we break down below here that could be trouble I had no idea it'd be trouble like this but if you look at this chart and you guys see where the sellers are That rejection up here brought those guys in. So it doesn't matter what time frame you trade. And if I take the volatility stop and go to a 15 minute, it shows you that as well. It actually showed the risk of buying this up. Trying to push to the upside here today. So you can use this on any time frame. Okay. Oh, just right click on the chart. Say add a plot, okay, add a plot, and then type volatility stop. Right there it is, volatility stop indicator. Brad, yeah, isn't that frustrating? That's a learning experience um, that you had there and, and take it as a learning experience um, because it it will show you what you, if, if that's happening a lot, it's one of those things that you need to fix because if you fix that mistake, you start making more money. Okay, so be really careful with arbitrarily or going against the price action of the chart to set your stop. Say, well, I can't take this much risk. My stop has to be here. See, I just completely disagree with that because what you're telling the market is I know more about you than you know about you. Does anybody here think you know more about the market than the market does? That you're smarter than everything that the market is showing you in the chart. I, I know for a fact I'm not. Okay. And and there's no amount of arguing with the market. It's gonna, gonna do you any good. You could say, well, I gotta do it this way because I can't do it. Okay, just get ready to keep getting the same kind of results. 
when we argue with the market, when we tell the market we know more than it does, like Ed says, here's your sign. <laughs> okay? Just follow the price action of the chart. If the chart is showing you risk, high risk, make a note of that. If the indexes are showing you high risk because of the volatility, make a note of that. When the market is showing me that kind of thing, I automatically want to trade less or not trade at all. My only trades today was taking profit on my diamonds trade and selling covered calls on my TLT long position. Those were my only two trades today. And none of those had anything about chasing the move of the day, um, chasing the flavor of the day, because there's just too much risk. Market. Doesn't mean there's not good trades. There's good trades setting up. And I set alerts on a couple of things uh, prior to the selling here in the market, that CRM I set an alert on. There. I set an alert on tap here today, another one. Um, so IBM was alerting here earlier today. Okay, so I'm looking at those price patterns where the buyers are, where the sellers are. And, and by the way, when you see a sell-off like this today, and you look at this chart, is there anything wrong with this chart in IWM yet? Certainly we're nervous about it, a bearish engulfing candle. But there's nothing wrong with this unless this follows through to the downside. If I make a knee-jerk reaction trade, if I'm long this and close this out, this is exactly what I'm talking about, and I close this out, I could miss out on that next upside move if it does it that tomorrow. And we know that's possible with the volatility that we see in the market. So work with the chart. Oh, well, my primary tool is price. Um, and again, I believe it's the most important indicator that we have is price. Perhaps you were talking about the option trades because, yeah, I do have quite a few tools in my toolbox that I can take advantage of price action. That might be what you were commenting on. Um, let's talk about multiple time frame analysis. At the beginning, I said one of the things that I see a lot of problems with in people's trading is that they never decide who they are as a trader. They want to be, they, they want to trade everything. They want to be the best at everything. They want to trade every pattern, every setup, everything in the market. They want to use all the indicators, scans for every certain, you know, everything in the market. And the fact is, guys, nobody can do that. Nobody has the capability on their own to master everything that there is in the market. There's a ton of different ways to trade. You don't have to like the way I trade. I honestly don't care whether you like the way I trade. Um, you've got to find your niche in the market and you've got to make it yours. You've got to decide who you are. What are you going to do? Now, I do some of the most basic things in the world. I tell people what I do is actually pretty boring because what I do is I trade two patterns in the market. Stocks trending up, I trade the pullback opportunity and look for buyers. I don't predict buyers are coming in. I wait for buyers to show up. 
or I trade that move trending up in the pop out of the box pattern and just reverse that for a downtrend. That is all I do. Now I've got multiple ways I can trade that with options. Okay, lots of different potential ways I can trade those patterns. But I do the same thing over and over and over again. Market. And I like the simplicity of that. I don't I don't care about you know what MACD has to say. I, I, I don't care. MACD, by the way, is moving average convergence divergence. It means moving averages are coming together or pulling apart. Well, for Pete's sake. I can see that in price action. I can see that in just the three and the eight. Okay. What I care about is whether I can get into a trade in my pattern with a low risk entry or is it a high risk entry? High risk entry, I probably won't trade it or I'm going to use a strategy that gets me far away from that price so I can exploit the price action without actually having to take directional risk on the trade. Okay. So try not to overdo it in your trading. Try to keep it as simple as you can to get the information that you need to make quality decisions on your trades. Okay? I see too many people trying to use multiple time frame analysis thinking they can outsmart the market that, well, if I go to this time frame and do this and this time frame to do this, that's going to make it better. I, I have yet to find anybody in coaching that does that that makes money doing that. One person in coaching that can show to me that they make a lot of money doing that. Can't see it. Because it doesn't happen. And the reason it doesn't happen is because there's too many contradictions. Again, somebody's trying to be too many different things or trying to wear too many hats. Figure out who you are and then just be that. Be willing to say, well, it's just not my trade. I got to go find something else. Like the chart. It's not my trade. Okay. We had a discussion today in Rightway Options. I've moved several people and I didn't move them, they moved themselves with a discussion on Hike and Ashy. Um, and there's a lot of people that struggle with micromanagement and they have found when they go to, to um, a Hike and Ashy chart, it slows things down. Um, Mark, um, in right way options, um, struggled a ton in his trading. He now trades a 3-8 trap on uh, and talk about getting simple he trades the 3-8 trap on a hike in ashy and he only follows i think it's 20 stocks at a time only follows 20 stocks he's got a win-loss ratio this month of 84 percent Because he has decided this is who I am as a trader, and that's what he does. He trades less than a lot of people trade, and he makes more money because he knows who he is as a trader now, and he just repeats the same process over and over and over. Okay. You may not like Hike and Ashy. That's fine. You don't have to. 
But if you struggle with micromanagement, you might want to look at it. It's simplifying things again. Here's another thing we talked about today is, remember, Mark right now is tracking an 84% win-loss ratio this month. Following 20 stocks, trading the 3-8 trap, and that's what he does. And I asked him today, Mark, are you going to the, to the regular chart for, to find your entry? And he said, no. This chart, this is all I do. Now, I'm not saying everyone can have an 84% return. Mark's been working at that for or, um, win loss ratio. Mark's been working at that a long time to get there. But he's found his niche in the market and it's extremely simple. He does the same thing over and over. He trades less, but he makes more money. He has fewer drawdowns because he follows the price action of the chart. Okay. Now, I know this kind of discussion is not really so much about the indicators, and it's not very sexy. I mean, I can get you all wound up on sexy here really easy because I, I talked about this this week in RWO. This is something I created because someone came to me with a with a chart um, at, or came to me, this was years ago, and said, oh, there's this ribbon study. This ribbon study is the coolest thing ever. And all it is is another way to follow trend in price support. I recreated it by using Bollinger Bands. But the same thing is true here, guys. If you like this, by all means, use it. I don't have a problem with that, but let's be realistic at what it's doing. What it's doing is it's showing us where buyers are. It's showing us where sellers are. That's what it's doing. And I'm, I'm using the, um, right now I've got, got this um, obviously on a hike and ashy. But it doesn't matter if you change that to um, a candlestick. It does the exact same thing. Okay. All this is is to, and because I know I'm going to get the questions when, as soon as I move from here. All this is is a Bollinger Band. Okay. The green Bollinger Band is an eight period standard deviation of 0 0.30. So write that down, guys, if you want to do this. Well, it is. And it's filled in with a color. The red band is 11 period at a 0.2 standard deviation. And then I even created a yellow band that you don't need because that's what the original indicator that this person sent to me it is. There were three ribbons. So I created this to mimic that 15 period and a 0.2 standard deviation. Okay, um, yeah, and by the way, there's no magic in these numbers. Green is a period 0.3 standard deviation. You're welcome. But what I want you to notice here in, in virtually all indicators, it's taking price, time, and volume and it's trying to help you see support, resistance, and trend. Because that's all this is doing. And the way I, I'm gonna shut this yellow off because I think it can be a little bit distracting. I tell people with this, if you wanna use this, when green is over the top of the red, start looking for your entry. Well, guys, um, in this chart, 
have my simple naked chart there. There we go. In this chart, that's the first higher low. You get how many times have you guys heard me talk about that? The first higher low. There's your trend and there's your support. So you set a price alert here. We can see where the buyers are and where the sellers are. Buyers are down here, sellers are up here. We're looking for that to pop through. It's the same thing with every one of these patterns in here. What this ribbon study is showing us, um, there it is. Um, what this ribbon study is showing us is when the bulls start taking advantage or overwhelming the bears, more buyers than sellers. So we set our alerts in here and we wait for those entry signals to occur. And we just keep doing that as long as that price pattern continues to play out. Okay. Notice that when I put these on here, I don't even do any drawing on here. When I put this on here, I don't put any other indicators on here. Okay. I think they're probably going to be pretty close to the same. Um, think or swim is going to um, they change. Their standard deviation calculation is a little bit different. You may have to adjust that a little bit for toss, but it wouldn't be hard to do. Okay. Yeah, and there's actually an indicator in in Thinkorswim. It's called uh, go to first wave. The Mobo bands. Um, I actually help write that code. Uh, for the first wave club that I was in, and this was with David Elliott years and years and years ago. Um, all it is 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 a Bollinger band restricted. Okay, the actual the actual Bollinger band is or Mobo band is ten with a point eight standard deviation. Okay, I tightened this up because I wanted everyone to see where the bulls were taking over, right? Where the bulls were starting to gain advantage. Green crosses over the red. We hold that, just like in the 3-8 trap. If I go to my 3-8 trap chart, guys, it's the same thing. Three crosses over the 8 and the 3 holds above the 8. So remember here, guys, with the 3 8 trap, the 3 has, an, it has nothing to do, for me anyway, with trapping prices in a range. Okay? I know that's how Rick uses it. He, he spread it out to the, to the high so that he could get more signals being price being trapped in this area for more uh, potential scans. But that's not why I use it. What I'm showing you with this and what I'm showing you with the ribbon study is the same thing. Is that momentum in here is turning bullish. Think about it guys, when the 3 is unable to cross back down through the 8 and we see buyers step back up into the trade, momentum is moving to the upside. But when the three crosses below the eight, we have lost momentum and any upside trade now has to be questioned carefully because we could cross back up and then fail. Because we lost momentum in the move. And that's all this is really showing us. It's showing us trend and that the momentum is staying with the trade. We can put up Coke. We can see the same thing. 
we can see when the momentum moved to the bullish side. We take a look at PepsiCo. We can see where the momentum stayed to the upside. We can see where the momentum here is in the favor of the bears. That's all a 3A trap is. It's showing me that momentum of a move. Okay. So if you decide to use this, just keep it really simple. I would recommend that you do something like what I do is I look at this chart most of the time. If I need to confirm something against a moving average, I go to my 3.8 and I get my confirmation. Okay, if you choose this, start with this simple chart, you can see the pattern, you can see the trend, then get your confirmation. Yep, I'm right. Momentum is staying with the trade. Okay. And that's a real important thing to remember in your trading. Not every trade is a great trade. We can see times in charts. If I go back over here when Coke, we couldn't hold momentum. We cross down, cross up, cross down, cross up, cross down. There's no momentum here. This is chop. Momentum, bullish momentum came in here where we held the higher low. That makes sense, guys. So I'm gonna wrap wrap this up so you guys have a break before John comes in. But hopefully you can understand the simplicity of this, that trading can be way easier than we make it. Okay? That we make it hard we make it hard by trying to tell the market, we know, we try to predict it. We know more about you than what you know about you. But if we really looked at price action and seriously considered what that price action is telling us rather than what we want to see, it told us that this was dangerous. And if you wanted to trade it at all, you should be thinking short. Not long. So think about those things carefully and, and think about how you can simplify your trading. The things that you can do to put yourself back just a little bit and say, I'm not the smartest person in the room and I can't predict the market. And not only that, I don't even want to anymore. Define who you are as a trader and then just be that. And I don't care if you just say, I want to do just one thing. Doing one thing right over and over and over is better than trying to do everything and only doing part of it right. You'll make more money doing that than trying to be the jack of all trades. So guys, thanks so much. Thanks for those kind words. I, I really do hope you got um, um, something out of that um, on the trade, the, the, the yellow one. Okay, let me just turn all these on again for everyone if you want to grab them. Um, the green band. Take a screenshot or write these down, okay? The green band is a Bollinger Band on an A period 
okay, meaning eight day period or eight candle period. Doesn't matter if it's a five minute chart, it's eight candles, okay, on a 0.3 standard deviation. Okay, that's the green band. The red band, and I don't know if I can do these, if it will let me do that. Try it. Nope, it won't. The red band is 11 period. Okay, at a 0.2 standard deviation. And remember, these are not, I want to be really clear on this. I don't care if you're trading the 3 inch trap. I don't care if you're trading um, a, just a moving average chart. I don't care if you're looking at this Bollinger Band. I don't care if you're using the volatility stop. None of them tell you what the entry is. None of them tell you anything more than what support resistance and trend is, it's up to you to determine where the entry is. Price tells you the entry, not an indicator. Okay, and I learned that from some really hard lessons for years and years and years, made those mistakes over and over and over and over. Okay. So there's your simple, um, these are all simple um, Bollinger Bands, by the way, 15 period 0.2 standard deviation is if you want the yellow. I don't think you need the yellow. I honestly don't. I think it confuses things. Keep it simple. So with that, I got to go unless there's some really quick question that I can answer for you guys before I go. John will be on here really quick. Thanks for being with me today. I hope this was meaningful. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and I hope you can take something from this and really start to apply it to simplify your trading and making it a whole lot easier to make money in the market by just respecting price action. Okay. No, I did not say volume shows entry. Volume does not show entry in my opinion. In fact, I would tell you on a daily chart, volume is almost useless today and any day because so much of volume is hidden by the dark pools. Okay. Price. Price shows you the entry. Study price. Price shows you the risk, shows you where the buyers are, where the sellers are, shows you opportunity, it shows you support, resistance, and trend. Price is your indicator that is most important for setting a trade. Never a calculated indicator on its price. Okay. You guys have a great afternoon. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much for listening. Um, RWO folks, I'll see you over back over in the trading room um, to do the wrap up for the day. Take care, everyone. Have a great afternoon.